What's up my dyslexic squad? My name is Jemima and today I'm going to share with you my top 10 dyslexia life hacks. I hope this video really helps you out in some way, um, even if it's just with day to day stuff, um, or even if it just makes you feel, uh, I guess, a little bit more comfortable with your dyslexia. It's definitely not something to be shameful of or something to hide. I'm really proud of my dyslexia and so I ho hope this kind of helps you feel a bit more of that pride. Um, or even just gives you a bit more of a community feel. You know, we make up 10% of the population, so you're definitely not alone out there. So let's jump right in to my top 10 dyslexia life hacks. So life hack number one is audio at speed. So if you're like me and probably most dyslexics out there, you probably hate reading and I don't blame you. Um, it can be a really tedious thing to do. So naturally we look to alternatives and a lot of us are probably reading audio books through Audible or watching YouTube or Khan Academy or any of those sorts of things to help us along. But the problem with those things is that um, they can be quite slow, especially if you're reading for pleasure and audiobooks used to put me to sleep. So something that I've discovered to help you become a faster and more efficient reader, reader is speed functions. Um, and all of those things that I just mentioned have speed functions on them. So what I trained myself to do was to read at, I think now, three times the speed of normal. Um, and so I can read a 10 hour book in just three hours, which is amazing because now I can take in so much more content in such a short amount of time. And so basically what I did was I started off at maybe 1.5 and then once I felt comfortable, I moved to two and then once I felt comfortable with that, moved to 2.5 and so on until I got to three. Whether you are dyslexic yourself, the parent of a dyslexic child, or both, no turn alone. This book will show you the path to hearing all of these rules after yourself, your child, and your family. Regardless of cultural or economic differences, I feel a great sense of community with everyone who is dyslexic. It's like you grew up in the same place, the same country, the nation of dyslexic. Uh, some of them are doing, I'm a you assume, I'm a human, what I gotta do to get it through to you, I'm superhuman, innovative, and I made a rubble, so that anything you say is sick of shaking off of me. So life hack number two is fiddle toys. A lot of dyslexics and a lot of people who have ADHD tend to struggle in terms of focusing their concentration. Um, and when I was in school I used to find it really, really hard to concentrate during lesson time um, if I didn't have something in my hands. So, you know, even in year 12, I guess, you know, in my pencil case, I had, yeah, sure, a couple of pens, a couple of pencils, but most of my pencil case was filled with things to fiddle with, things to keep my hands busy so that I could actually listen to what the teacher was saying. Um, so, behind me is my home desk, um, and these are some of my favourite things to fiddle with. Um, my number one is probably Play-Doh, it's my go-to. Um, I can make a whole lot of shapes out of it. I even use it as a memory tool sometimes. Probably my number two go-to is the fidget cube. Uh, fidget spinners are also pretty good. A lot of people have seen the fidget cube. And what's so good about these guys is that um, they have some silent things um, to fiddle with as well. So some of their buttons that you press are silent so that you don't annoy other people around you, which is probably not so good if you're in school. Um, but they, they keep me entertained for a long period of time. And by the way, a lot of dyslexics tend to have ADHD as well. Um, or elements of ADHD, so if you're struggling to listen, get some new things for your pencil case. So life hack number three is a little bit of a risky one, um, and it's called exploit your friends or exploit the experts. Now obviously I don't mean exploit your friends in the literal sense, um, but what I used to do when I was in high school is I would seek out the smartest person in the room for every subject. I'd sit there on day one of term one and look around the room and go, who is the best at biology, for instance? Now, my actual friend nowadays, <laughs> Ruby, uh, Ruby was my acquaintance back then, I suppose, and I knew that she was the best at biology in our year level. So I befriended Ruby, I sat next to Ruby for a little while, we had a few chats, and then I said, Ruby, here's the deal. You're really good at biology, and I know you're really good at biology. If you sit down with me for one or two hours a week or whatever it was, I will buy you lunch at the cafe for two lunch times per week. And so I made a deal with her. Now, Ruby wasn't being wholly manipulated here. Um, you know, Ruby was getting something out of it because she was teaching me and by, by teaching me, she was also learning herself. But, you know, it could be a really good thing to do because a lot of dyslexics find that they learn through conversation. And so if you're looking but if you're looking for a way to learn best, it can often be a really good thing to just find someone to have a chat with about a particular topic or a particular subject. Um, it really helps to consolidate the information in, in your mind. They can also ask, you know, you can ask them questions and they can answer. Um, they can ask you questions and it's just a really good way to consolidate your learning. 
Now, if you're not so comfortable with manipulating your friends, that's totally okay, good on you. Um, what you can also do is sit in front of the mirror and have a chat to yourself. Um, I used to sit in front of the mirror and talk about psychology to myself all the time. Um, I used to just sit there and be like, okay, Javon, we're going to talk about you know, mental health today. What's the definition for mental health? And have a full-on chat with myself in front of the mirror about all of these concepts. And what that does, is, it, again, just makes your answers so much more concise because you've already gone over them in your head. And so when it comes to the exam, it's so much easier to write the answer. Life hack number four is speech to text. So I feel like a lot of dyslexics at the moment are using text to speech, which is, which is great. Like, that, that's a great program to have. But not a lot of us use speech to text. Um, I find that a lot of the students that I meet um, with dyslexia have a lot of trouble getting what's on their head onto the page and if you're having that barrier, um, speech to text can be a really good option. Um, drag and speak was the old version, I find that to be a little bit dodgy and unreliable um, but by all means give it a go if you want to. Um, I just use Siri or literally just the microphone icon on my iPhone or on my iPad. Um, I find that that works just fine. Um, and it really helped me out when I was writing essays and things like that because I could just speak out my ideas as they came to me rather than you know trying to hold on to that idea and put it into words at the same time because otherwise I'd often forget my ideas. So I also use this for social media. Hey Siri, text Jacob. What do you want to say? I'll send your message. So life hack number five is capital letters. Now obviously don't use this one in your exam or on your schoolwork because your teachers probably won't like it. Um, but capital letters can be really good for anything that you're writing to yourself, anything that's personal. It's a really good way um, to speed up your reading process if you're reading information in your own handwriting. Um, capital letters have a lot more shape than um, lowercase letters. Um, a lot of dyslexics struggle, struggle with vowel sounds because they all look like little circles with you know, little bits added on. That's pretty much all that they are in our minds. Um, once you put letters into capital letters, they start to have a lot more shape um, and they're a lot more distinguishable, I guess, um, in our brains. So it's a bit weird because if you're writing on social media and you're using capital letters, it might look like you're shouting all the time, but it can be a really good thing to be able to read your own handwriting a little bit better. So thank you so much for watching my very first YouTube video. Um, if this video helped you any, in any way or you have an idea for what you want me to talk about next time, um, please leave me a comment below. I love reading your comments. Um, and this is going to be part of a series. So I'm going to be doing a whole lot of videos about dyslexia. Um, I've got a whole lot of ideas for content that I've already mind mapped out. But if you've got any ideas, please let me know. And hit that subscribe button for my next video. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.